Hi Nick, thanks for joining us again today. You're welcome. So we're just going to run through the um, the questions and answer session um, that we didn't get a chance to um, to take forward from our head teacher forum. We obviously had lots of questions that were feeding back to you from the breakout session. So I think without further ado, we'll get straight into the questions. Right. So one of the one of the first questions that we we had back from one of the groups of head teachers was, um, so how important is it to have somebody in SLT who has clear responsibilities for careers? Um, to actually support our career leaders um, if they're not the senior person? Uh, I, th I, think it's, I think it's vital that there's somebody on the senior leadership team driving anything that you think was worth driving in school. So if, if careers and enterprise is important, then um, it has to be given uh, time, resource, it has to be given access to governance, it needs to um, be high profile within the development plan of the school and that only happens really if there's a senior leader driving it now in my particular school we've taken it to an extreme where the careers leader is an assistant principal that's their sole job they're not a teacher and they drive it and they make sure it's on the agenda of uh, you know senior leadership meetings um, governor meetings and on the development plan so in the absence of that, then there certainly has to be somebody who is driving that because otherwise the careers leader or the people who are responsible for careers will feel often kind of unsupported that they that they're, it's a kind of bolt on, that it's not a massive priority. And I just think, as I said at the start, it doesn't matter you know, what it is that you're driving. If it's important to you and a priority, then somebody senior has to be driving it. it, it otherwise, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah, and, and, and we do see um, quite a, 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 a dif differentiation really across where governors, that governor who has that responsibility for careers on that governing body actually engaging. Um, so again, do you feel that obviously regular meetings with the, with the governor with responsibility for careers, with your senior leadership, with the career leads being a really important sort of group? Yeah. It, 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 it is. And again, it, it depends very much on the person as well, you know, so and, and there's also a little bit of a which comes first, the chicken or the egg. So, um, you know, we in the past have had people who have kind of been responsible for, um, for as, as a governor for careers and enterprise and who, um, you know, who have been less effective than the, than the governor we have now. And, and the governor we have now, I think they came and joined us because they have a careers background, they'd heard about the work they were doing. So they were interested in being a governor. So we have somebody now who's a real expert on it mm -hmm. and who is a, you know, who regularly comes in and not just to see what's happening, but to kind of challenge and ask some pertinent questions. And, uh, and when, when it comes to governor meetings, it's not the careers leader or a senior person feeding back. It's actually the governor's feeding back because they genuinely know it and genuinely get it. So, you know, what I would be saying to, to schools is, you know, instead of kind of looking around your governing body and saying, well, who can we give this to? Look around outside and say, who would be a fabulous governor who we can give this to? Um, someone from industry, someone who's got some interest in, in kind of careers and skills. Yeah, and really bring that expertise to the, to the actual governing body, which will obviously help with widening the discussion across other areas that um, from, from, from the team perspective, won't it? Yeah. Um, uh, Again, another, I suppose another contentious uh, point that always gets raised is around obviously the, 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 the differing role of career leaders um, and certainly across our region um, and the, you know, the, the time that some career leaders have because it's their full time role within school and then others who are obviously doing it on top of a full teaching role. So, um, yeah. you know, why do you think that there isn't this co consistency really, I suppose, across everywhere around, you know, this career leader role within schools and, and, and what I suppose what an important role that it would it, it does yeah. it does play in terms of that it's, school it's a, offering. It's a really interesting question, and I think it again it kind of a, it doesn't matter whether it's careers or whatever it is in schools. You know, schools are autonomous places, uh, whether they're you know uh, multi academy trust academies or, or or not, and 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 they sort out their own priorities. Um, I think often what we invest in. Um, is, is driven by what we're held accountable for um, and you know it's interesting you know I look in you know when I look in the Times Ed at, at jobs coming up at the moment there's lots of assistant principal posts for personal development 
because suddenly personal development is a quarter of the Ofsted framework. Um, and sometimes that drives things. Um, and, you know, I, I think I was, I, was really, I was really pleased to see careers and enterprise in the Ofsted framework, the new framework. And I think that the fact that every school has to have a careers leader uh, and that is going to be held account, accountable for that in some way has kind of got the ball rolling. But I think then the inconsistencies that you see you know, will are, are inevitable because schools are, are, are autonomous. And I think that's where the role of, you know, careers, you know, kind of enterprise coordinators, uh, careers hubs, that's where they can really start to kind of bring schools together to kind of discuss this and to challenge that and to say, well, look, this school's investing more time and look at what's happening. You know, if you want to get the same results, you're going to have to invest some, some, some more time. I think the other thing I would say as well is, um, I, I didn't deliberately set out initially to, to, to appoint somebody who wasn't a teacher. You know, my first incarnation of, of a person who was in charge of this area, it, you know, were, 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 was a teacher. But when they retired, I, it was a great opportunity for me to go out and seek someone who wasn't a teacher, because not only did they bring a fabulous perspective to the role, but just having somebody from a, an industry background and a, who'd had a fairly senior role as well, to be part of your senior leadership team, they give us a massive different perspective on everything that, that we do. Um, that, 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 and I think, you know, if people are talking about time and resources, then it is, if, if you give, if, if somebody's teaching, then, you know, they're gonna be able to give you know, little time to this. If you've got people actually whose, you know, full-time job is coordinating all the things that go around with careers, engaging businesses, trips out, visits to universities, visits to businesses, getting it embedded in the curriculum. That's a full-time job. And I, as I say, I think it's really worth investing in. And part of it, I think, is trying to win hearts and minds, which is kind of the stuff you've done in the conference. Part of it is, um, you know, kind of, you know, I, I spent a lot of time, you know, before this new framework, lobbying Ofsted to say, you know, why isn't this featuring more highly? Um, and I think as, if schools are appointing personal development to people to a senior level, then it may be them that take on a, a, a you know, significant part of leading from a senior leadership point of view, that, 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 that career enterprise role. I think because we're a very large school of 2000, you know, I've got both. I have an assistant principal for career and enterprise and an assistant principal for, for uh, personal development. But, you know, you put your cloth accordingly. But I just think um, I do feel sorry for for careers leads, particularly if they've got a teaching load and they've been given, uh, you know, a, 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 an hour a week, you know, you, or two hours a week. We, and again, I go back to the kind of the example of maths or English. You wouldn't have an English teacher and say to them, you know, you can teach English twice, uh, two hours a week because the rest of the time I need you to do something else. You know, <laughs> you'd have them, you, you, would be, you, you would use them all the time. Um, and I just, I just think it's really worth, uh, worth investing in. Yeah. And I think as well for those for those um, skills and colleges where the, there is some limitation on time, I think that's where the use of your enterprise advisor, who is that person from business out in, you know, yeah. out, out in, in the community mm -hmm. that can really bring some of that, you know, additional uh, support to that team, obviously, alongside, you know, the enterprise coordinator as well. So it's, it's, it's building that network, isn't it? It is. And, and sometimes you've got to see it to believe it yourself. You've got to experience it, I think. And yeah. You know, I remember it was actually at my previous school where I was head when, you know, we became a business and enterprise specialist college. So I appointed somebody who was, wasn't a teacher from outside to kind of lead on that. And, you know, suddenly I was like, wow, I've got I've got this person whose full time job is just making my life easy. It's, you know, wherever you went, there was people in doing all sorts with the kids. And you're thinking, gosh, I haven't put any extra pressure on a teacher to do that. That's someone whose job it is. And. I, I, I tried to say this the other day, you know, if you're looking for teachers to do extra stuff, you know, then they'll hide from you. <laughs> I always used to find teachers hiding from me at first. And then, but, but if you actually appoint someone whose job it is, they come knocking at your door and saying, can we have a careers fair? Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we get this business? I'd like to organize this. And, you know, you end up hiding from them. And, and I think that's the lovely way around to, uh, to have it. And, and what happens is, as a, as, as a head, you know, I get loads of great accolades for thing, great things that our school's doing. I'm thinking, 
you know, all I did was just say yes, crack on with it. You know, uh, I think my job's done when I when I make the appointment. And as I say, I think that that slide that we had the other day, you know, who wouldn't want a careers leader? And I suppose I would go further and say, who wouldn't want a careers leader who wasn't a teacher? Nothing against that, but just so that they've got all a full time to 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 make this really really work. Yeah. Yeah, um, we had um, a few questions come back from, from the breakout sessions, um, obviously around that, around we don't have time, we don't have resource. Um, I suppose, I, I think the key thing that I just wanted to explore now was that you, you mentioned within your presentation as well around that you took the decision to, to, to build careers and enterprise into it. So I suppose the key question is, is so what, what did you cut to enable you to do that within your budget or is it just a case of that that you were constantly looking at how things were changing within 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 school and, and the way that you could actually move things forward yeah it's 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 a really good question and and you you, you know you're right I, I was setting this school up from scratch um and so uh, it was an amalgamation of two schools so I was looking at what staff I had and I was basically saying this is something I want really central to what I'm doing um, because of my experience of in my other school, um, I wanted to upscale it to the size of a school, so I just made that part of the structure. Um, but if someone was saying, so, so it wasn't a matter of cutting something, I was just obviously creating that structure. Um, but as I said before, you know, further down the line, I had to make redundancies. Um, I had to do a big restructure across the across the the the, 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 the college, and I ring fence that department to say, no, that department's not not going to be touched so you know uh, without you know <laughs> trying not to sell you know to, 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 to pick certain areas out but just to give you examples there was things like you know we we, we had a, an arts technician um but when I was ahead at my previous school we didn't have an arts technician so although it was nice to have it wasn't essential to have so I was kind of thinking do I want a careers team or do I want an arts technician yeah. I looked at how many learning support assistants we had and, you know, you've got people saying, oh, well, every, all of these children, they have to have one to one. I think, well, no, they don't have to have one to one. You need to look at, you know, we, we looked at how many learning support assistants we had and what their role was. We looked at other areas of inclusion. We looked at class sizes. You know, we often say, you know, oh, a maths teacher's left, so we need another maths teacher. You know, well, what we do is we, we start the year and if a maths teacher leaves, we've actually, you know, we've we've got enough staff to cover. We just increase class sizes. Um, you know, I think there are the. There, that there is, there is, there are savings to be made. I often say it's like in your own personal life. You know, I don't have a great car. I just have kind of an old banger, really, because I like holidays and nice clothes. That's mm -hmm. my choice. So if I want to have a career in enterprise department, I might have to do without something else. Um, and I can also give other examples where it wasn't careers and enterprise. It were, it was other areas that I wanted to improve as we went on the journey over the last ten years. So three or four years ago we thought our exclusions were too high we decided we needed to invest more heavily in inclusion and alternative provision so we did that so again we were you know as people left and sometimes it was senior leader you know you had a couple of senior leaders leave you thinking do you know what actually we won't replace them we can cover that with that we've saved that money let's have an inclusion coordinator and a couple more you know kind of uh, support assistance working in that area and it's just kind of moving your, your you know your, your, your money around and you know, I remember being a young head teacher kind of saying, I can't afford this. I can't afford that. I have no money. And, and I suppose as I got more experienced, I'm, I'm a little bit more happier to kind of say, well, actually, if I want this, then I'll just something else will just have to give. Yeah. You know, that that assistant person who works in the, you know, in the library will just have to do without that. Because for me at the moment, this is more important. Um, and it's kind of been... Um, I suppose it's courageous leadership to, to do that. And I think often, often we do this thing about we've got to, we have a structure and we can't change it. And I think another thing, I think I alluded to briefly the other day, I'm a governor at, at, at Barnsley College, which is a you know, really successful FE college. And I've been a governor there for eight years and I've seen the way in which FE has to run itself. You know, there's a very changing landscape depending on what skills there are, what children, are, what, what students are opting for, et cetera. And, and every year they're having to restructure. Every year they're having to say, right, we're overstaffed here. And also the FE sector has been cut by about a third in the last few years. So they've just had to cut their cloth accordingly. And it's kind of helped me to, as a leader to kind of say, you know, keep at the forefront of your mind, what is it you really want? And that will change. Um, and as those things change, or, or you say, no, I am determined to do this, 
then you set about a plan of how you can save a hundred thousand pounds, two hundred thousand pounds in order to do the things you want. And that could be just not replacing something that's 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 left, uh, or it could be actually you know taking it a step further and actually doing a restructure and saying actually. I need to really get this sorted out because I can't afford to wait. It's too important. Yeah. And, and how did you sort of embed that new culture then? Um, and obviously bring in all of your staff along with that, that, that journey with you. Um, I know there was a couple of, I think, a couple of uh, discussions uh, within the breakout rooms around, you know, obviously maybe for some schools would be a big change in terms of what they're looking to do. But uh, just be interesting to understand, you know, how that sort of, yeah. how you started it in and where it got to. In terms of the staff, I mean, it was quite interesting at first, you know, the, 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 the staff knew that this new head had to be in his bonnet about enterprise and careers and, you know, working with the community, but they didn't quite get it. Um, and, and because I kind of had to interview everybody, you know, as, as the two schools were closing and amalgamating into one, you know, they were all desperately scurrying around trying to find out what's the right answer to these Chris question on that. But again, what it was then was, it was it was living and breathing it just like I'd be kind of become a convert I then saw staff realizing you know heads of department going this is fabulous there's some you know all I have to do is go and ask that team if they can find somebody to come and work with our students you know I, I remember you know uh, textiles for example you know the, the team had gone out and sourced this um, this designer who was very happy to come in and work with the GCSE textile group so you suddenly started to really quickly win hearts and minds and I think I said the other day you know, on the other side, so uh, pastoral staff, you know, heads of year were were, were thinking, you know, we're, we're, we've got a group of really kind of disengaged students here. And so out the team would go, right, we'll set them up with a bespoke work experience. We'll do some stuff after school with them. And it was like, you're going to do that for me. It's like, yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's our job. You know? um, and it was it, 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 it was fabulous. And, it, and it's worth, and as I say, I think the biggest accolade for me was the, the, the my, my deputy head at the time who, who was um, driving standards, who was really the person who was raising achievement. Um, she just said, right, when I'm ahead, first thing I'm gonna do is create a, a create an enterprise department because she just saw the impact it has on the public face of the school, but also on the students, you know. Um, we, we, and I think that's why I kind of go back to now, coming out of COVID, you know, we can't be exam factories. We can't make the recovery about must do more maths, must do more English. Like, you know, boxer from Animal Farm, I must work harder, I must work harder. It's like, actually, no, we just need to do something differently. Yeah, yeah. And um, I know you mentioned before about Ofsted. Um, and again, there was a, there was a few uh, questions coming uh, back um, around Ofsted and the fact that um, one school had recently been inspected by Ofsted um, and uh, Ofsted really honed in on that personal development curriculum, making sure that it was mapped against everything, um, you know, and looking back to, to presentations. Um, so do you think with the change in, in Ofsted around curriculum content, um, how, how, do you, how do you still think that it keeps a relevance to subjects and skills in the workplace? I think that's a really good question because um because the um sorry i'm being distracted by my cat now that's right <laughs> um, i think the, the the good thing about offset is that it that it is in you know careers and enterprise is in there you know they're gonna they, they want to see that there's a good career and enterprise program and they'll check that they'll look at your plan and they'll go and talk to the children about it uh, and talk to staff but i think it's that other kind of paradox around the content, you know, kind of the curriculum now, it, 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 you know, the drive is very much around knowledge uh, as opposed to skills. You know, we, we, we schools are creating knowledge organisers and we're having to do much more retrieval of students ready for exams, etc. However, what, what still is in there and what Ofsted are very impressed with is still really clear examples of where the curriculum that that, that knowledge that, that is brought alive by having built into the scheme opportunities for young people to engage and have those real meaningful encounters with uh, with the world of work and if you've got people in school whose responsibility is to, is to support subjects to do that then I, I think that's where there's a win you know I think it's it's difficult for you know, a head of department who's got to really get the curriculum right, get all the knowledge right, they've got to get through the syllabus, they've got to make sure they can articulate the intent, uh, etc. 
to then be told, oh, and by the way, you've got to make this meaningful and real and go find some businesses. Um, whereas if somebody's saying, come and have a chat to us, tell me how we can help you make your curriculum come alive, mm -hmm. we'll go and get the businesses for you. We'll organize the trips for you. Uh, we'll get you a little work experience yourself uh, for a, a placement for, for a while. And, and, and I think that's where you kind of can combine the two. Yes, it's a knowledge heavy curriculum, but there is the, you know, the kind of the, the bringing it alive in that scheme. And I think when Ofsted come, it's really making sure that in articulating your intent and talking about your intent and showing the intent, you're also saying, and our intention is also to make sure that my subject is relevant to young people when they leave school. Uh, and this is how we do that. And to be able to articulate that as well with some really good examples. Uh, and for children to be able to do that as well, for them to talk about, you know, their subject and how they love their subject, but particularly when this competition happened or when that speaker came in or whatever. Yeah, and actually being able to showcase that to offset as well. So it's not just about a set of numbers and, and data, but actually yeah. these are the things that we've actually made happen that have linked to that success, um, which I think is, 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 a really, is a really great point. Um, so just changing topic. Um, for our final question. Um, so one of our head teachers was uh, is in a school uh, year seven to 11, uh, looking at destination data and it's, it's a challenge. We know it's a challenge. Um, they've got a high proportion of send. Um, Compass Plus is, is really useful. Um, how do you think that we can tackle destination data? Um, and, 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 and is there any you know, really good, uh, any best practice that you could share um, for, for us? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a thorny one, really. And, and I was talking to our careers leaders this week about it, you know, kind of thinking, you know, do we have some magic wand? Have we got some really quick wins? And it, it, it is actually very much around. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a labour of love. It is, it, 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 it is just hard work. We're, we're in 11 to, uh, um, 11 to 16 school as well, so we don't have sixth form. We're lucky in some ways that you know, uh, the, the majority of our students will go off to Barnsley College, but lots of them go elsewhere. And I think the, the number of things that we do is, I suppose, is um, in the careers interviews that we do with year 11s, um, we, we kind of get permission from them and their parents to keep in touch with them, to get a personal contact, uh, personal emails, and we'll say, we, we intend to keep in touch with you over the next uh, couple of years. Um, and we, we get those permissions. Kind of to counterbalance that, one of the things we do as well is we say to students that when you leave, we will give you free careers advice for the rest of your life. That's one of the things we said. That sounds quite extreme for the rest of your life. But I think what we're really saying is, if you find yourself needing somebody to talk to again and some more careers advice, don't think you can come back here you know, over the next two or three years or whatever, can come back here. And that's a good, so those two ways are good ways of keeping a track. We do have very close relationships with the college. I think it's helped by the fact that I've, again, in terms of what I do, sometimes it's, it's I can't do some of the hands-on stuff, but I can influence. So, you know, I didn't become a governor at Barnsley College just because I had nothing else to do. I became a governor at Barnsley College so that I could have inroads in there. I could see how things work. I could learn lots, but also when you've got this issue of destinations, I can really work with the senior staff there to say, come on, you know, can we, can you make sure you give us this information? Can you keep on top of this? So I also really was kind of driving Barnsley College to make sure that they really kind of got into the careers and enterprise. So they have real good contacts with the careers and enterprise company. They've been trialing, um, you know, Compass, et cetera, so that when that comes on board for them, because I think that would be a, a good way. Um, so yeah, the, it, it is kind of a bit of a bit of influencing and a bit of and, and, and work really. Um, you know, uh, I know our team, you know, uh, have worked hard even this year, particularly with COVID, is really keeping in touch with Year Elevens. You know, because I think we felt this year particularly that you know student and lastly students could drop out. They start a course because their grades were higher than they probably would have got. They then drop out. Where have they gone? And we've worked really closely with the college to make sure that's that we've kind of mitigated against that and keeping in touch. So it, it is just kind of hard work on that. I think if you've got more students in different uh, providers, then that makes it even harder. Um, but again, I, I guess, again, it's, it, it's just, 
dedicating some time and resource to this um, and and making sure the students don't leave without you having contact details of them to kind of keep you know keep keeping in touch yeah. Um, and yeah I think we I think um yeah I think a lot of our schools and colleges have worked hard on actually having a, a, a better system in place so it's not left yeah. till uh, results day at the end and actually it's that conversation is it around and I know there's a lot of great um conversations that happen after where students still do go back and speak certainly to the you know the career leaders who they've had you know quite close contact with so yeah. you know, that's that's I mean, I've been I've been speaking to you know to, to the senior staff at Barnsley College to say you know can you let me know can you let our school know of any students who've started a course and not have dropped out but if they've just changed course you know they might have started doing a levels but actually now they've gone on to a vocational course mm -hmm. can you let us know so that we can keep in touch with them and give them some, some we'll give them some advice uh, etc yeah. um, and that, that, that that's helped too yeah so it is and it is about those local relationships isn't it as well um and, and, and obviously yeah. maintaining them as well so yeah no thanks nick i think um that's just i think that's the end of the questions that we had from the breakout session so um Thanks very much for, for obviously coming in uh, and recording those. We'll share um, the recordings out to all of our head teachers um, across the region. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. It was a real pleasure and I really enjoyed the conference the other day. We've got some great head teachers there. Yeah, and we've had some great feedback, Nick, and I think everybody really enjoyed your session and, and a lot of food for thought, really, in terms of what you were, um, what you were talking about. So, um, yeah, thank you. You're welcome.